Let's get into some of this morning's um, other headlines. We've mentioned the Conservative Conference. We'll mention that again. We've mentioned uh, travel changing. We'll get back to that a little bit later on in the programme as well. Uh, we've got Alice Watson-Brown with us this morning, political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Um, OK, so uh, I want to start with one of the stories that is getting a lot of um, conversation uh, in the papers and online um, on, on Twitter and stuff this morning. Uh, it is the so-called Pandora Papers. Um, the offshore dealings of world leaders, politicians and billionaires have been laid bare in one of the biggest leaks of financial documents. Millions of documents revealing the secret transactions of 35 uh, present and former leaders and more than 300 public officials um, is how the Times front page covers it this morning. Uh, of course, you can read that in the paper or get it online. Um, among the people named Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Tony Blair and his wife Cherie, uh, who saved £312,000 in stamp duty when they bought a £6.45 million office in London. No laws were broken and Mrs Blair has suggested the arrangement was at the insistence of the vendor. Um, so I, I just, I suppose, Alice, on this story, so, it, you know, it, clearly it's it's got a level of significance. I suppose in some of these cases, you know, on the front page of The Guardian, there's a picture that includes Vladimir Putin. Uh, and, you know, it, it's not that surprising in some ways that people like him are caught up in this, I suppose. No, you're completely right. I think it's a fascinating insight into the financial heartbeats of the world who are able to hide money away through offshore anonymous companies. Um, and I think in the UK, particularly, it does just demonstrate the smoke and mirrors that are the financial activities for the super rich and powerful. While there's been no illegal activity exposed yet, um, this sort of activity does deserve serious scrutiny, as it is usually the public purse and ultimately the everyday working citizen who are the victims of such dark money activity because they're losing money for the public purse from lost taxation. Yeah. Um so it's not surprising that Vladimir Putin is on the front page of The Guardian as, you know, the Russian oligarchy is what dark money is. Um, and in the UK, it does prove that there is a lot more work to be done with this kind of regulation. Um, in July 2020, 2018, the government introduced a bill which would create a registry of offshore companies in the UK. Um, and it's slightly ironic, as the business minister at the time said that the UK is known for its open and dependable business environment, which doesn't really seem to be reflected uh, in this report, as it mentions the royal family, as you said, it mentions Tony Blair. And I think analysis of this report, given the vast nature of it, I think there's 12 million documents. Mm. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Although the general trends of this report are clear and that there must be more scrutiny in this kind of activity. It's really interesting. And do you think that will come? So, you know, as you say, this is a huge leak of data. So the the, the, the sort of stats on this, um, the Pandora Papers, 2.94 terabytes of data um, to just sort of compare. The Panama Papers was 2.6 terabytes. WikiLeaks in 2010, 1.7 gigabytes. And that is just by way of highlighting how much information is in there. Um, and if we go back to, oh goodness me, years ago, so the WikiLeaks um, 2010 um, data leak, uh, have we had much change since then? Are these the sorts of things that provoke any meaningful legislative change to kind of rein in this behaviour, which as we're saying, is not necessarily illegal. It's, ju it's just that sometimes we get a bit jealous of rich people being rich. <laughs> Yes, well, I think there's lack of incentive for lawmakers to introduce stringent legislation around it because they'll be the ones benefiting. Um, it could be, as you say, it could prove quite embarrassing and awkward given the Conservative Party conference, as the report is due to mention Conservative Party donors. Um, so if, if all that these people have is benefit from this kind of activity, then why would they ban it? Uh, let us talk about the Conservative Party conference in that case. So, uh, a couple of things to mention. Um, Rishi Sunak pledging £500 million to help furloughed workers find jobs. The Chancellor will be on Times Radio Breakfast just after 7 o'clock this morning, so you can hear from uh, Rishi Sunak a little bit later on. Uh, so, the Conservative Party conference underway, Alice. Um, I was mentioning with Laura at the start of the programme, the kind of backdrop for this, the fuel crisis, the, uh, the cost of living going up, universal credit, that uplift due to end, the energy crisis, meaning people are paying more for energy. Uh, so Rishi Sunak, was he backed into a corner here? He's probably got no other option other than to throw some money at, at what is going to be a difficult time for so many people. 
Yes, it just sort of continues the trend of state-sponsored work, which has been triggered over lockdown and everything. Um, in the Telegraph, it claims that this drive is to help get older people back into work mm. uh, following the pandemic. But there's a complete lack of incentive for these older people to get back into it. Firstly, because of the suspension on triple lock pensions, they're going to be benefiting less and national insurance hikes. How much they really want to get back into work if they're only going to be faced with tax- taxation and a poor pension. Um And I think it doesn't necessarily line up with the other pledges to raise taxes uh, and help the public through what is scheduled to be a very difficult winter. Yeah, so you mentioned taxes there. There's another um, sort of uh, report and suggestion around today, uh, this from the Times, uh, about potential uh, tax rises. And this is a council tax rise. Ministers considering a council tax rise to plug at social care black hole. That's how the Times reports it. Local authorities warning they need an extra £2.6 billion a year merely to sustain present levels of social care. And they say that in the absence of central government funding, council tax will have to increase by 9% next year to help plug the gap. So that's the Times. And the Telegraph then, the front page of the Telegraph, Boris Johnson given a public warning from senior Tories yesterday not to raise taxes at the budget later this month after he repeatedly failed to rule out an increase. Uh, And so tax and and, and the cost um, of uh, of various um, policy pledges and concerns, including around social care, that feels like that might dominate the conversation a little bit this week. Completely agree. I think it could trigger more internal divisions within the Conservative Party and doesn't necessarily set up the party as united uh, for their conference. This could prove a huge problem uh, for the members, ele- you know, for the next election or the prime minister knows a general election is not around the corner. I think with this kind of scheme, transparency is needed. We still do not know about how the money will be allocated for social care with the national insurance hikes. So because this proposed scheme is very decentralised, it's going to every different council, we need to know how the appropriate scrutiny will be applied. And I think that is where the members' concern will lie. Uh, really interesting. I wonder if I can mention, just I suppose the characters, so Rishi Sunak speaking today, uh, you can hear from him on Times Radio as well, uh, Boris Johnson speaking on Wednesday. Do, does a party conference like this, does it go any way to kind of setting out the different potential leaders and the potential you know figures at the top of the Conservative Party this week? We know that throughout the pandemic, Rishi Sunak has been largely quite popular actually because of the many schemes that have been brought in to support workers and the economy. And I just wonder if this this is a, a kind of event that deliberately or otherwise starts setting apart, for example, the Chancellor from the Prime Minister in, in a sort of leadership context. Yes, I think you must have a point there. I mean, as you say, Rishi Sunak has proved hugely popular um, because of the furlough scheme. Yeah, Boris Johnson, his support has wavered um, among members of the Conservative Party for abandoning certain Tory principles, uh, such as low taxation. Mm. Um, but if you think about it, the promotion of Liz Truss. She was sort of tipped to be in the next leadership running. It's clear that Boris Johnson is keeping his, well, I suppose you could say potential enemies close uh, to create a strong centre of his party. Yeah, interesting. Uh, We should mention then, uh, Boris Johnson speaking on Wednesday um, at the party conference, he's going to announce that all of Britain's electricity will come from renewable sources by 2035 as he tries to reduce dependence on gas and other fossil fuels. So it's all about renewable and nuclear energy. Uh, Of course, we are facing a crisis caused by a surge in the cost of gas at the moment. Um, And of course, this is in light of COP26, which is merely weeks away now. So there there, there is a sort of environmental focus bubbling through as well here. Yes, I think people are concerned about, well, obviously funding their own energy this winter and the, I'd say, potential tax or hikes, again, Mm. for the green energy. Um, We will have to see how that plays out in the conference, the responses. Will Boris Johnson get heckled in his speech, uh, as happened to Keir Starmer? And it's sort of unclear about how popular um, sort of the green agenda is within the party, but that will have to come through further analysis and how the conference rolls out. I really hope that somebody heckles and shouts, where is Peter Mandelson? Which was my favourite <laughs> favorite heckle from the Labour Party conference last week. If anyone does that at the Conservative Party conference, you can have an honorary membership of the Early Breakfast Club. Uh, thank you very much, Alice. Lovely to speak to you this morning. Uh, thank you very much. We'll catch you again soon. That's great. Alice Watson, Brown political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK.